So there's been about 20 papers from Google, five papers from Apple, huge amount of literature, crazy naming conventions, like things that are sound both like they're simultaneously from like the new age occult and also from anime sci-fi movies. It's just the naming conventions bizarre. Um, and I haven't heard a word about it from tech news. So what is neural rendering? <laughs> and that's what we're gonna try and answer today. This is gonna be largely a lit review. So uh, we're gonna try and go over a lot of papers in very quick succession to try Try and make sure that you're up to speed on what this topic is about. I am not like the pristine expert on this field, so I don't want to kind of misrepresent it as like me knowing everything. Uh, but it is a really fascinating field, and it's something that's going to become important in the future. A basic definition would be that neural rendering is using artificial neural networks to replace graphics rendering. So basically replacing Blender with a neural network instead. So this field kind of blew up when a, a seminal paper called NERF, Neural Radiance Fields, uh, was put out and it had photorealistic renderings of objects through kind of photogrammetry like systems. So you take a bunch of pictures and then you would get out these 3D objects. The core idea is that you're giving a neural network a ray, so a position and direction, and you're getting back a color with with transparency. And this allows you to do ray marching, so you can march these rays from a camera through your scene, and at each point you can query the network and you can get a color and a transparency value. And then you can stack those image, those colors on top of each other and get back an image on what should have been seen from the camera. And the thing that's really interesting with this is that you can also do the reverse process. So if you have an image and a camera position, you can kind of march it backwards through the scene and do training that way. And so it allows you to kind of do the inverse of ray marching really easily as well so if you have any new images you can kind of shoot them into your scene and like train them into to the scene so now let's just start running through papers and all of the advancements that have happened since then because that was two years ago and two years ago is forever ago <laughs> Neural Graphics Primitives, or NGP, is a very standout paper, and it basically uses hashing to speed up a lot of these things that we've been talking about. And so you can get things to go in order of magnitude, orders of magnitude faster. So like before when I was training nurse over the course of like, I'd, I'd let it go in the evening and then I'd wake up the next day and see if it did what I wanted it to do. Now you can just, like it takes like 10 minutes. And so this is something that if you're experimenting with nurse, you should really be familiar with this idea because it just enables so much quicker turnaround times. And I really would recommend recommend anyone experimenting in this space to start with NGPs and play around with those and then some of these other ideas try and incorporate them into the NGP type model. MIP360, which is the neural radiance field that was used in Dream Fusion, has a few extra advantages that they've added in. So there's things like it uses cones rather than rays and that gives a sort of anti-aliasing effect. And then also for the 3D 360 environment, it also does some things with geometry to try and map all of the geometry that expands into a more localized region. So it uses some really weird geometry, uh, which helps for identifying the central object and then making sure that the background can also fit into the scene. So it sort of does a bounding on the background. It has a bunch of other features, but yeah, that's those are the things that are really interesting about it is that it kind of can localize an object and that it can also have really good anti-aliasing effects. So it doesn't have as much jaggedness that you might see in some of the other. Spatial Neural Radiance Grids, or SNRG, is a way of baking radiance fields so that you can use them in real time. Uh, and so basically, in Instead of using a field at this point, you're cutting your field up into a bunch of little grids, and then you're kind of baking in all of the information into those grids. So it uses some conventional uh, graphics rendering as well, which means that it speeds up the interpolation time, like how quickly you can get it out, which means that you can view it in real time. And, and impressively, it can be viewed in a browser. So this is something that like they have a demo on their site for using it in the browser, and you can just see nerfs in browsers, which is um, very impressive. The shading code for this is ridiculous, so I'm going to try and work through that at some point because I really would like to be able to use it myself but yeah the shading code is pretty ridiculous for it it's using 3js though so that's really exciting from my perspective because i use 3js <laughs> so neural reflectance and visibility fields are trying to alter uh radiance fields so that they are reflectors instead so that means that you can start relighting and doing some more advanced lighting effects with radiance fields uh but then it also means that it creates an extra set of problems so in particular it, it makes the problem of finding the reflectance field intractable and so it, it has to create another 
field called a visibility field to solve the first problem. So it, it basically creates two sets of nerfs and one of them is to solve the reflectance problem of being intractable because you have so many kind of indirect scattering effects. So the thing that I find really exciting about this from the AI art perspective is that it starts reintroducing materials into nerfs. So uh, the conventional nerfs, they can do some material aspects, but they can't do kind of like harsh reflections and doing things like a lot of the weird effects with materials. These have full uh, BDFs. It basically has Blender materials baked into it. And that's what's really exciting about this particular paper is that a lot of the other nerfs don't actually have full materials. They can do, they can emulate material like effects, but they can't kind of tap into it in the same way that this can. So this might have like deeper integrations with something like Blender where you can start doing material editing and stuff like that. So there's also denerf, which is dynamic nerf, and that allows you to do time included in the nerf. And so you can start doing animations and things like that. And it has this really high quality look to it that is something that you might see out of like something that looks more like it's a the ray casted version of Blender and it looks very nice. But like I think right now these are a little bit slower, so you can only do renders and you can't do real time stuff with them. So this is something that like when this starts getting concatenated in with some of the other more efficient ideas, some of these things could like get very advanced very quickly. Like this field is like it is going to get big quickly, I think, because a lot of these things can be sped up. So one that I wanted to highlight is the sign nerf. And so this stands for single image nerf. And they're using a depth map in conjunction with a nerf to create a 3D object. So I did attempt to use this because now we do have AI art and depth maps from those AI art pieces. And so in principle, you should be able to use this, but I was having some difficulty making it run. But in principle, you should be able to use that to get some 3D art. So neural reflectance fields from a shading and shadows under a single viewpoint. So basically, this is the idea of using shadow information and a single image or single viewpoint, I should say, in order to calculate out a nerf. And so it's using changes in light. And you're trying to find out if you can use the information from the shadows in order to calculate out a nerf. And yeah. <laughs> That's crazy too, because you're using shadows. So this is the one that was released like a week ago, and it's using language guided diffusion, like in order to get single view, like nerf synthesis, which is, yeah, <laughs> like it, basically you're, you're using the language guided diffusion. So you're saying like, oh, this is a backpack. And then you have a picture of a backpack and then it's creating a nerf based on the backpack and a single image. And so there's just some ways that you can kind of start combining these networks and these ideas into things that just seem so surreal and so futuristic like it's just technology that like I thought that there wasn't like I thought that there was limitations on how much knowledge you could use as a prior in order to generate some of these things I, I thought that there was more limitations than there appears to be <laughs> So most of what we've been talking about so far is all nerf related, but in terms of neural rendering, there are a, a bunch of other methods too. And so sign distance functions are one of those. And that is basically an idea where you're using, I need to read more about it. It's it's, it's another approach that seems to be very good at capturing shapes. Um, And so it's used very often just finding shapes of objects. And it also can be combined really easily with these diffusion models so that you can create unique shapes that have never been seen before. And it, so it's another one of those kind of crazy ideas where you can can start generating shapes from words and yeah th some of this stuff is just ugh, like it's wild shadow neural radiance field shadow neural radiance field <laughs> What is this naming convention? Um, so these are shadow aware multi-view satellite photography from Earth orbit. So basically it allows you to create these of elevation maps and things, which could be really helpful. Like it's, it's, it's crazy how much information you can get from like a satellite image now, but really high quality photogrammetry from a satellite. I, another piece of really impressive work. There's this project that's called Magic 3D from NVIDIA, where they are kind of combining some nerf methods with latent methods and it's creating some meshes that are really high quality uh but they do look a little bit overbaked but like this is such a crazy field right now <laughs> so like um and there's also been like three or four papers like since i just in the editing process of this video that have been released that are seem really important so i don't want to go over everything but like this field is just ex so expansive right now <laughs> there's the dream fusion paper which is the text to 3d and that's using um imogen an ai art program in conjunction with nerf in order to get that 3D aspect. Um, I wanted to highlight one of the things. So now we also have something called stable dream fusion. So that's the stable diffusion version of dream fusion. I wanted to highlight one of the issues that came up with creating that. And that is the fact that Imogen actually has a 64 pixel model. Whereas if you try and make those same types of images with stable diffusion, you end up getting really messy things. So that, that's one of the reasons that like uh, the stable diffusion or stable dream fusion ends up being a little bit more difficult to use is that we don't have those kind of micro image generation. I wanted to highlight two GitHub users that have done a 
huge amount for the open source community in terms of making a lot of these papers accessible. Uh, so they have um, implemented quite a few of these papers on neural rendering. And so you can start looking at the code that they've done. And a lot of their code is also really well laid out. So it, like they've named all their variables really nice things. And so it, it, you can kind of work through it over time. And like they aren't simple, like these topics aren't simple. So if you have some difficulty with it, like I don't want to make it sound like it should be super easy, but it's something that is understandable. And like these papers, a lot of them are implemented in under a thousand lines of code. So like it's not, like, although there, there's a lot of like hidden stuff under like libraries and stuff. So it's not like the simplest topic, but it is something that is, you can eventually wrap your head around. And I just think it's really important that these papers were like, that the code is out there and in the open source community. And it's not just kind of hidden behind walled gardens and stuff like this. The neural rendering is in the wild now. Like it's not, it's not behind closed doors, which is just kind of really exciting to see. It, it feels like this is where a lot of the ray casting technology is going to end up. So when you're doing ray casting, you ultimately are depending on like what your initial objects are. And when they're meshes and these textures and stuff, a lot of times you end up with having to simulate a lot of the reality stuff. Whereas with neural radiance fields, it can capture a lot more accurate information. So I think it like as a primitive, it makes a lot more sense to be using those types of things rather than meshes and textures. And so it might end up like it might be much more disruptive than people imagine it to be in the future it might just be that like a game is like a set of really complicated neural networks and you're just querying it for information based on like where the player is and the logic is all tied in there is i don't know I, th like it's all this is kind of like 10 to 20 years away though but like in the next five years a lot of the technology is going to start getting integrated so like it's there's a near term a lot of this is possible and then in the distant future like i don't even know what's going to end up being but um i think a lot of this is pretty disruptive in the short term as well thanks and have a good day. <laughs>